Okay, I'm working on the blade. This is the last piece that I'm getting ready for the primer. I got most of everything real close. I got a low spot right here that I got to put add to, but everything else is real close. So I take the coarse sandpaper to take down the, any high spots. And then I'll take the medium paper and get there a little more. And then I take the wet sandpaper, put it right here and start sanding that, and then that brings you right down to shiny. The primer is actually shiny when you're done with the, all the different sandpapers. And I almost see it shine already. It's just very smooth, just like, just like glass. I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but that's what I want to get to right there. Every, and then I take a, a round file and I file this, and then I have to hand sand it every joint. I file this and sand it and this. And I got some parts over here, and so I just got one more low spot that I got to do, and then I'll uh, work on that again tomorrow. But my I actually, my fingers and my thumb get really sore from sanding. You can't do it all with the little, the Dremel tools. So anyway, so that's the last piece. <clears throat> and hope you all had a nice Christmas. We had a great time and wasn't the same without the kids, but we, we made the best of it and stayed positive and remembered all the good Christmases that we had. So today I'm... Uh, you can see here I kind of we primed we prime I got most of the parts primed but here you can get an idea how I wet sand the primer even and uh to get that to get that looking even smooth and uh, I just put the I just set the caps back on here but I had them all off so I could sand it easier and then I just threw these caps back on and I got the I told you I had to do a little bit more work on the engine. And uh, so this side here wasn't too bad, but this side here I got to do some, I got to do some more sanding on, but it's, it's getting there. And then over on this, I got the roof sanded and I wet sanded the top. And uh, so that part there is wet sanded. So I'm slowly getting there. So anyway, here we go. I got a booklet, a book that we've keep, been keeping over over the last 20 years with all the articles that I've been in. And um, we got, I've been in over a hundred articles over the years with my toys and everything. And so I was gonna kinda, 13, was it, we just, 14 years ago, I was writing, writing an, monthly articles in the Toy Farmer magazine, how to make, how to make parts for different toys. And, uh, I did that for about a year. And so this isn't new to me to share what I do with everybody. When I went to the National Farm Toy Show in 98, I was excited to meet some of the toy builders and uh, they weren't excited to meet me. They were, they were not friendly to me. They wouldn't tell me. I asked them a couple of questions and they would hardly answer me. And there was one guy that did, I think his name was John Schultz. Was it John? Steve. Steve, yep, Steve Schultz, yeah. He told me everything he knew about toy building, and I never forgot it. Well, I guess I did. I forgot his first name. Sorry. <laughs> well, we, no, you, yeah, yeah, you had to think about it. So <clears throat> one of the main things I wanted to know was where you bought the little chain to, to build combines, the little sprockets. Nobody would tell me. So once I found out, he did tell me, and once I found out, I bought a roll, and I've, I, since that day, I've told everybody because I thought 
dig on it. This is a great hobby for everybody. And uh, there's so many people that want homemade toys to, to think you're scared that you got competition that's going to take your toys away. It's just crazy. I mean, I'm just one person, and I, uh, I, I have never been caught up in 20 years. So but what I'm trying to do is maybe give you guys some ideas for your kids or even you to maybe make some toys yourself, and maybe you could sell them. This is a rough time now. Everybody's got to stay home, but go out in your workshop and putter, and you never know. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are making them that I gave some tips to and they're making the toys a lot nicer than mine are. So I uh, know there's a, a lot of talented people out there. So, but anyway, I was going to kind of show you just a couple of the little first articles. One of the first things I made was this little back, this backhoe and a snow blower and uh, another, what's that one down on another snow blower. And uh, the snow blowers are hard making the flighting was uh that was tricky you had to split the washers and twist them just right to meet the to meet the next washer to make the augers and that was tricky the the back hole was fun that was a that was a great project so i think like i said before we we um we i did a i did a toy building class online about 13 or 14 years ago and we all made a green cart and i i told everybody so we don't have to you don't have to use metal you can use plastic or wood or even cardboard and so people all over the world made the grain cart with me and that was pretty cool so maybe we'll do that again but i'll make something simple and even if it's from cardboard when you're done when you're done making it from cardboard you don't realize that you have the pattern to make it out of then you just put those pieces down and you trace it and make it put it on plastic or wood and i mean you have that's the pattern you need to make the model so okay so here we go and here's one of my trickier models when I first started was a beet harvester. Uh, I made I made about maybe five or six different ones. I only made one of I think I only made one of each. I just there were so many cool ones. And here's my first toy combine I built the 9600 and that was pretty cool. And here's the first I think this was the first article that I got put into uh, the toy trucker magazine that made it on the cover. And I could not believe it. I was just shocked because I just sent these pictures in and I hadn't, I hadn't even finished the projects. You can see there's still tape. I took the old cast cylinders and I made the cylinders work and I still have tape on, on the cylinders. They weren't even done. And um, I still, this, this loader is still sitting in my back shed in the dozer and the, and the other, I think there were three pieces of equipment, an excavator. And so, I mean, I was just shocked that that made it on the cover, but it's that's still pretty cool. And here you can see the, what is it, the uh, dozer, the loader, and, oh, there's a dump truck back there. So that was pretty cool. And here's the second combine I started to build, a 9600, and I never finished it. I took that to Dyersville just like that, and somebody bought it. Somebody bought it just like that. It wasn't even finished, so that was pretty cool. And here's, this was the, one of the coolest things that happened early in my uh, toy building career. And that is uh, September of 1997, my potato harvester model made it on the cover of Toy Farmer. I, I, it was crazy. I just, I couldn't believe it. So that was cool. I love that model. The Michigan potato industry ended up buying that. And uh, like I said before, so you first time people here today didn't wouldn't have heard it, but these uh, the Michigan potato industry wanted me to build them a bunch of small early horse drawn potato diggers, and I ended up building them. I I I can't remember exactly, but I know I built maybe fifteen or twenty of them, and so they gave them out as, as presents and for like their potato conventions and stuff and um so then i said i didn't i didn't like doing that in fact people i still get some of the potato people that still want one of those models and i just i just i just moved on it's just so fun to keep doing new things so anyway there's that was that was a cool thing and then there's some pictures of the the engine on the potato harvester i always tried to get a lot of detail and uh so that was very cool 
And then, um, let's see, there's some more, the potato planter. And here we are on our anniversary. I thought that was the first time, Deb, we ever went there. It was our anniversary. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And we didn't have no toys to show, I don't nope. think, right? And we met the lady that worked, that was a writer for Toy Farmer, and her name was Debbie Bean. And uh, she just was so super nice to us and made us feel comfortable doing the interview. And Oops, I can't um, it. How about that way? Oh, that's good. Whoops. There, there, that's good. Right there, it's good. And that was 20, what do we say, 96, 97? So that would have been like 23 years ago. She has remained Deb's, one of Deb's best friends for 23 years since we met her that day. We used to visit with her at the toy show every year. We went to the toy show for about eight years in a row. So we got to know everybody there and we everybody was so nice and it was such fun. If you've never been to the Dyersville Toy Show, um, you gotta take your kids there one time or you gotta go there if you like tractors. Cause, but not this year with the COVID. It was, they said it was not very, not very busy. And I'll just go one more. Oh, what's this? Mich oh, the Michigan Magazine. Some of you may have seen me on TV. May, there you go. may have seen me on TV on the Michigan Magazine. And they came here and uh, they did a TV segment. And he showed that. They showed that for a long time on, on the PBS channel. So that was very cool. It's scary. See the TV cameras here and, you know, but it was, it worked out good. And let me see. There's the potato planter that I built for the potato industry. And that model there sat in the National Farm Toy Museum for about 12 years. And they uh, were downsizing the museum and they were getting rid of stuff. And I just told them to go ahead and auction it off put it in the auction and I would donate half the whatever it got to the Toy Farmer Museum. So that was part of the cool thing. But the other part of the cool thing was that model was was bid on by a, a friend of mine that lives down in central Michigan. And uh, he, he ended up, that's at his farm, not too far from where I grew up. So I think that's very cool. And what else we got here? Nothing there. Just the rest of an article. And here, oh, there's the Michigan Magazine again. <laughs> so, but anyway, let's just kind of, what we hope to do is put a lot of pictures and stuff of the, some of the models being built. And maybe I can give you some of you, some of you some early ideas how to get going. I uh, think it was just the last, the last video we, sh I showed how we did the tires and the axles and stuff. So. If you didn't see that, if you want to go back, if you want to go back to that video, that gives you a little bit of an idea how how to start a model. If you or even if you just go to a garage sale and buy an old truck or something and and redo it just to get you the feel of working with the little axles and the wheels and stuff, and you can customize it and do different things to it. But that's a good way to get started. And that way you're not wrecking it because you probably only pay five bucks for the for the whole truck at the garage sale. So. So anyway, I think, let's see, let's see. That's probably about as far as we're going to go. So, but anyway, thanks again, everybody. I get a lot of friend requests, and uh, I feel bad I can't accept them because I have 5,000 friends, and uh, they won't let you have any more than 5,000 friends. So we have 400, I think, 400, today we had 430 friend requests still. So all I can say is, Go to the YouTube channel or go to Twitter because there's no limit there. And uh, so then you can see we post every day something new. So if you go there and I post, I post several times a day my YouTube channel. It's um, youtube.com backslash doncampbellmaker.com. Got it. Okay. We got people think I quit the Internet. Like eight years ago for no reason, but I got hacked. My identity was stolen. They swindled some lady out of her life savings with my pictures. So my daughter, Nicole, said she thought that people might enjoy some of my recent projects. And so here we go. We don't know how long we're going to be here, but for now it's been fun. And thank you everybody. And um, we'll catch you tomorrow. Have a nice evening.